What's up guys, this is Highlight Sun RCT, and today I bring you another video update on the Emulation 2019 series. Now this one is part number four. I'm gonna be basically showing you guys the PCSX2. I'm saying that carefully because it's, it is a tongue twister, at least for me. Try to say that 10 times over really fast. Um, this is a very nice emulator, one that is in my top 10 of best emulators why well for several reasons number one being that the playstation 2 believe it or not in the scope and in the context of systems like the gamecube um uh, wii u which we already have covered which are supposed to be more demanding in terms of power the playstation 2 architecture has always been one at least for the emulation scene a tough nut to crack now this emulator is the one that i follow i don't know that there might be i mean i haven't gone as far as trying to to uh, research many other playstation 2 emulators but this one is the one that caught my eye back then and i have been following its progress until now it's still at this point 2019 not running 100 percent perfect it is emulation after all so there's nothing perfect um, but they have been able to do a lot of progress and especially the last year year and a half and uh, the advancements ha you know shows shows I try to cover and trying to go back here out of point um, I try to cover in this series not let's say oh what I think are the best uh, the must-haves uh, you need to run these don't run the other ones because to be honest it all depends on preference it all depends on the power the hardware that you have to run it on and some other factors um, but basically the list I'm trying to keep it that's why you probably don't see me starting from the 8-bit 16-bit consoles because let's be honest at this point in time you can run those systems on a phone you know, even these systems are being emulated on the phone, but that's a story for another day. What I'm trying to cover here is the best emulators that would actually push your hardware and you get uh, really ease of use, so you don't have to go crazy having to configure files like we used to do back in the old days if you wanted to run emulation, and basically giving you the most features you know, um, I, don't, I don't. I can't say bang for a buck because you don't actually pay for emulation. But you know what I'm saying. Basically, give you that good experience that you can relive the classic games of the console that you're emulating, and at the same time be able to, you know, mess around with it to the point of being able to do and go beyond what the system was originally capable of. That's the whole point. Now, in the case of this one. It does not run 100% of the library, you know, at full speed yet. However, it's at a pretty nice 90-something percent, which that is not bad at all. And um, depending on the game, you might have to do a little bit of tweaking, but it's not to the point where it's going to drive you insane and you're not going to be able to enjoy what you're trying to do in the first place. So that out of the way, hopefully I did not take too much of your time rambling too much let's go into the screen and show you what i'm talking about all right so basically right off the bat we have the emulation screen that you're all used to in terms of options this one is pretty beefy in comparison to say some of the others like semu which of course they're so growing and Features are being added, you know, day by day or on a weekly basis at, at the very least. Now, emulation settings is something that back in the day when the emulator was starting out, you had to go through a lot of stuff configuring uh, the CPU and, uh, and the graphics. It was really, really something that you needed to research and able to set this up in a way where you actually wouldn't um, hinder what you were trying to do in the first place. Thankfully, with this 
uh, version of it 1.4 most of that stuff has come already configured for you so you don't have to really mess too much with it the only stuff that you should if you want to tweak and tinker is basically the video settings now the video settings of course you have the options of choosing between plugins this is something that you have a lot of options here but the, the only one that you need to worry about at least with my experience is keeping it at least at the very least the most modern one on the hardware side meaning that you're not going to run this through software emulation you're going to be using uh, your graphics card to take the brunt of the hit the power hit so just keep it in in direct x uh, 11 the 3d 11 one and you mess around basically with this right here which is the native resolution I struck a nice balance here at six times native I can I can also run it in eight times native but I don't wanna have a lot of issues since I'm recording this in real time for you guys so I just keep it in six times native enable the HW hacks of course that's something that a lot of these features are to help with certain types of games that they have artifacts they're not rendering or drawing uh, polygons or sprites or whatever and you basically um, should have these so in a specific case of a specific game needing to have a fix at least you have it activated and it will kick in automatically so you don't have to mess with that some other options that you could tinker a bit like the uh, shader configuration basically go in here and you have different shaders to give that TV effect to make it feel more authentic different scan lines here you can enable a uh, type of effect which is kind of like anti-aliasing uh, doesn't take much of a hit if you use it but I prefer to run it like this you have another shader boost which kind of messes around with the colors and brightness and stuff like that I leave it as it is and basically yeah that's basically all you would uh, have to do on your part after you install the, the emulator and you configure of course the most important part of all is basically configuring like where are the folders and stuff like that that you need to show the emulator where you have your game stashed or whatever so it can read upon that after you configure that and you configure the controllers of course if you go into the plugin section which is uh, loading right here here's where you basically configure all the plugins that the emulator already have for you to do things like load uh, ISOs or load uh, uh, files or whatever and also to load uh, configurations for you to do for your uh, controller without the controller or controllers you're not going to be able to play so what's the point once you have that done and there's plenty of documentation for you guys to uh, set this up really really simple stuff you don't have to go too much the most uh, features from this menu that you're going to be using is the actual ISO selector and of course to boot and once you do boot that you have also uh, to enable cheats and widescreen patches which I like to have because some of the games I like to run in widescreen for the purpose of this video I'm going to be running on the standard 4-3 uh, ratio but it is an option there for you guys any guys that want to use that now let's go into the ISO selector because I've been talking too much and showing very little let's go into the browse and actually you know what let's run the one that I had because it does save your last selection as the main CD or the main game that you're gonna be running unless you tell it otherwise so right now the last one I was running was uh, Odin Spear so let's keep that one go into the boot you have a option to boot the full CD I'm gonna do it for the first game so you guys can see and double click so it goes full screen and here it is when you boot it this way you have the whole intro of the 
PlayStation 2 console. But you can also use the second option, which is the one for booting right away to the game. Now, if you hear some weird noises, it's not the emulator, it's that I have the train running around and I'm willing to bet that it's being captured by the mic, but you know, it is what it is. Got that nice intro going on there for Atlas. But yeah. Of course, they, there will be a little bit of some artifacts here and there. As you can see on the screen, there's like a thin line. But of course, we are running this at six times the resolution and using some of the game hacks. Now let me check on the volume real quick guys. Let's bring it down a bit. And go back in. Let's load my last file here which is not really... Vanillaware, of course, 2D Masters, and this is, of course, a very, very beautiful game, very beautiful RPG. The 2D art from these guys is, like, impeccable. As you can see, when you run it in full screen, you do see some flickering lines like on the left side. You see that little line up here sometimes. But as far as the game, I mean, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. It's running full speed. There are some weird effects like transparency effects that will differ from the original game. But hey, that's a nice trade-off for having this game as such a high resolution. But of course, for the purists out there, you can also run it in the original resolution, and some of those effects, or some of those weird effects that you see will go away because it's going to be rendering at the resolution that it was meant to be. We will have the option of playing it however you want. Let's do a little bit of a uh, simple batter up here. And then we'll go into the next game. Going through a little tutorial here. But even in the tutorial, it's extremely beautiful. Get those crystals. Set the window to whatever size you would like. This is one that for the ratio of my screen, 4K screen, it works really, really well. Now, you go here to shut down, turn the game off, and then go back to the selection. And let's
let's see. Now let's throw uh let's throw it a something a bit more challenging and see how that works out. Uh, God of War 2. I haven't tried it with my setup yet. And I'm gonna go into fast boot. So we go straight to the game and don't have to go through the intro. Let's see how this one runs. Of course you can save the memory cards are little file, little bin files that you can if you played previously of course you can import and export and all that good stuff. So far six times the resolution is looking looking good. Kratos is looking ah and is in good company. Nice. See if it feels sluggish. Don't let him open the door. So far, so good. It was nice and smooth. In this type of game where speed means everything. It's running really, really good. Hell, it's running pretty good, so good, but I might actually stream this later on. Sound revolution, of course. The graphics look really, really well. Nope, no aliasing uh, anywhere, so... Surprisingly enough, I expected it to be a bit more, can you say, a bit more blurry. The gods, he's killed them all. He still has some of the but powers of the gods. Really sharp, really If you want to save, just like every animation, from full screen, just double click, you go outside to the window, and then from here, basically go to save state, whatever slot you choose, and just click on it. That should basically save it for you. Let's do another one. Let's see. Oh, you have it. All you have to do is just go back to load state, select the slot that you had it, and just hit it, and it will load up your your save file. All right. So let's see what else we got here. Let's do. Let's do one of my favorites. Hokuto no Ken. Which is a fighter for the Thomas Wave. And this is the port version for PlayStation 2. And of course, it doesn't um, compare as the original Thomas Wave one, but it does a really good job of recreating the, the arcade title. Hokuto no cared. And fortunately for Fist of the North, uh, North Star fans, 
you will be able to play this game, at least here, with this computer, a bit more faithful and less artifacts and stuff like that because uh, on the emulation side, the Atomic Wave version does have some artifacts that is really, really annoying. Which I, I guess I will show you versus comparison when I get Mr. Hard. Demi Emulator, which is going to be, I think, the next one or the other one. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about here. But for the most part, it does a really, really good job. The time of retribution. Battle one. Decide the and the destiny. speed is rather in this game particularly you need those 60 frames. Now there is a weird effect that it does. That it kind of blurs. They appear smart. When the characters they go and they're a little bit farther away apart, it starts getting more sharper and then more you get in, something a little blurry. I guess it's some sort of effect that is trying to be there to make it um, less daggered. Either way, it looks really good. Win, Kinshiro. Okay, let's do this round real Battle quick. Two. Decide the destiny. pad with RK6 is a lot, a lot easier, but the point is, that one runs really, really well as well. So let's do one more. How about we do a shoot em up? Uh, should I do Gradius or should I do... Let's do our type. like that because of course it's gonna be a test let's choose from the first three of course we're gonna go with uh, the original ship and let's see how it goes this one was one that I used to run back in the day through hyperspin and it did seem to chug back then so I'm kind of curious to see how it runs now Given that now this emulator has been moving away from using a CPU to using a GPU. Oh yes, it is. It is different. It does feel very, very smooth. 
and not miss artifacts too. So glowing rice, if you're watching, this one is a treat. At least play this way. You have to play our type of portrait. Now you also can, and since this is gonna be the last game that I'm gonna showcase, actually you know what? This shouldn't be the last game because there's one that I should show. Because it wouldn't be a PlayStation 2 emulation if I don't cover it with that game, so stay tuned for that. Let's do something real quick. Mid-game. Without even turning it off, let's go to configure, emulation settings. Actually, no. I'm sorry, my bad. It should be... Yeah. That's where I'm supposed to go. Window. And what we'll do is we'll make it widescreen or fit to window any of those will work apply okay and go back in and hopefully it won't break and no it did not break so there you go of course the game was never meant to be widescreen so it's going to look a little stretched It is stretched, but it looks amazing. It's crystal clear. It runs at amazing speed. And I am getting my ass kicked. But that's not the fault of the emulator, of course. Now let's uh, shut it down. Go back to emulator uh, settings and have this back to standard 4.3 for the last game for today. I will be uploading more videos, gameplay videos, to give you a better idea, you know, without me talking there in the background, just the game running, so you guys see what I'm talking about. I'm going to be doing a few of those videos for each one of the emulators, so don't feel left out if you like a particular one over the other. So as a last game, I am going to go... I don't have the one that I really wanted to do here. Hmm. What could I do instead? Let's see, do I have it here? No. It's on me, my other folder. Unfortunately, it's not here. But it's okay if I do manage to get it. The one I wanted to do for you guys was uh, one of the Final Fantasies, but unfortunately I don't have it here in this folder. So, and since I haven't configured Beyond, I still need to go through my hyperspin drive to see it must be there. So, in lieu of that, and in lieu of Castlevania or Bloodstain coming out in June, let's run this one the last game see how this one boots up for the PS2. Already a save file there. Fourteen seventy six, Malaysia. A great war raged between Full Dracula motion video and seems humanity. to be working nice. 
just when it seemed that there was no hope for mankind to prevail. Yep, escaping pretty well. I know you're here! And here we are. And it's running at a pretty nice speed. of that darkness. Uh, I still feel a little little guilty of leaving it there, but I will run others like Metal Gear Solid and um, Final Fantasy and those kind of more popular titles for you guys later on. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, stay tuned because next up is going to be Dreamcast Emulation. And as a bonus, within that same Dreamcast Emulation, I'm going to be covering a little bit of uh, Atomus Wave as well. So stay tuned for that. If you liked, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care and keep on gaming.